Okay, so this video will cover basically organelles with a brief discussion between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, and it's focusing on 2.1 and 2.2 for the AP biology curriculum. All right, so when we look at cell organelles uh, or cells in general, we have a couple different branches evolutionarily. So we have two categories of cells. We have prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And so in the eukarya, that's going to include our plant cells, animal cells, um, fungi, protists, etc. Basically cells that are going to have a nuclei um, and organelles. And that's going to be the main focus of our video. And then we have our prokaryotic cells, which are cells that lack nuclei or, or and membrane bound organelles. So when we look at prokaryotic cells, they can be divided into two categories. You have your bacteria and your archaea. Now your archaeans are um, basically single-celled organisms that are going to live in extreme environments like hot springs in Yellowstone National Park, which is where they were first discovered. Um, and when you look at the evolution between cells, um, the Archaeans are a little bit more closely related to eukarya or eukaryotic cells. Okay, so when we talk about um, our two types of cells, or we have prokaryotes and eukaryotes, um, one of their main differences is going to be the size. Prokaryotes are super small cells, whereas eukaryotes are much larger. So here you can also see other differences. Um, the plant and animal cells pictured have lots of organelles versus the prokaryote that has um, basically a what's called a nucleoid. So this um, area in the center of this cell, sorry, uh, right here, it is not a nucleus, but rather a dense or like a the, all of the DNA like hanging out closely together. So that would be called the nucleoid. A region in that prokaryote it is not a membrane bound organelle and then prokaryotes also have these extra pieces of DNA called plasmids um, and then they have ribosomes though and ribosomes are an organelle but they are not membrane bound the other key difference um, between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that prokaryotes do not undergo mitosis rather they go through a process called binary fission and in binary fission they make a copy of their one circular chromosome um, and then they divide the cytoplasm into two cells so this i should also mention this blue area here the dna is one circular chromosome um, versus the linear chromosomes in eukaryotes Okay, so now let's go through the different organelles we would find in eukaryotic cells. So our first one is the nucleus. Now the cool thing about the nucleus is that it is um, membrane bound. So this orange area here, um, basically it contains our DNA. This is also where we find transcription occurs when we are going to take the information in our genes and transcribe it into RNA or copy it into RNA. That happens here in the nucleus. Now you also see on this um, nuclear, this, this part here is called the nuclear envelope. And you can see these holes. Those are nuclear pores. So when the mRNA is made in protein synthesis, the mRNA will actually travel through those pores and exit the nucleus that way. Okay, um, so let me just clear off this ink. Um, so there is our nucleus. You can also see that the nucleus, um, the nuclear envelope is continuous with the rough ER. So here in real life, the nuclear envelopes, lipid bilayer, would like form with that nuclear envelope. Now in our nucleus, we also have our, um, well, we have our chromosomes, our DNA, but our chromosomes exist in a form where if you have like these proteins called histone proteins, the DNA like wraps around histone proteins 
And when our DNA is uncondensed, we call that chromatin. So we find our chromatin and our chromosomes within the nucleus. Oh, this is what I was talking about earlier with, um, so here you have the nuclear envelope and you can see these nuclear pores where the mRNA will leave through. And you can also see how it um, is like, what is the word, continuous with the rough ER's uh, lipid bilayer. Um, this is just showing, I really like to, um, I like this picture because it kind of shows the chromatin here, but it also shows like this nuclear envelope connecting with um, the rough ER's lipid bilayer. So that nuclear envelope, let's be clear though, it is still made of a lipid bilayer, the same building blocks as you would find in the cell um, plasma membrane or cell membrane. Okay. So let's go ahead then and look at ribosomes. So ribosomes can actually be found in two locations or two types of ribosomes. In eukaryotes, we have what's called membrane-bound um, ribosomes and free-floating ribosomes. So here, this one is going to be a free-floating ribosome that you find in the cytoplasm. Now, this ribosome will make proteins that are going to stay within the cell. So that might be a kinase or a relay protein or an enzyme of some sort versus if you have a bound ribosome, it is bound and attached to the ref ER. So um, here, when we look at um, what ribosomes do though, ribosomes are the organelles that make proteins. And so if I take this strand of mRNA that we see right here, so this mRNA, it's the ribosome that is going to um, basically be the location where the tRNAs will come and transfer and bring amino acids to the ribosome. And then the peptide bonds that we learned about in unit one, so this right here is a peptide bond formed by dehydration synthesis. So, oops. So as that ribosome translates and reads the messenger RNA, um, the tRNAs will transfer and bring amino acids. So if it's a ribosome that is attached and bound to the ref ER, that protein will eventually be sent out of the cell or it'll become part of a protein that you find within the cell membrane. Now, like I mentioned, if it's a free-floating ribosome, it'll stay within the cytoplasm. Okay, so if we talk about the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So here you have the smooth and here you have the rough. Um, basically, the smooth ER is where you're gonna have lipids be made. The synthesis of lipids occurs here. It also is um, where we detoxify our body. So if um, uh, you have any toxins in your body, for example, they'll be um, broken down in your smooth ER. Now, we also find that if you look here, like uh, the synthesis of steroid hormones happens in the smooth ER. So lipids are your um, basically nonpolar macromolecules. Your steroid hormones are made from cholesterol, which is a lipid. And so uh, those will be made in the smooth ER. And then we have the ref ER, and the ref ER um, is the site of protein synthesis for those um, uh, membrane-bound ribosomes. Now we have our Golgi, and in our Golgi, um, this is a series of like flattened discs or sacs. Um, and the Golgi is basically, um, we always compare it to like a post office or something, but basically inside of the Golgi, you're gonna have some, uh, those proteins that were made by the ribosomes on the ref ER will be packaged, modified, sorted, um, and then they'll be carried by vesicles uh, from the Golgi to the cell membrane to be exported from the cell. Okay, so oh, let's see. Here we go. So uh, these organelles that we've talked about so far, though, all together work in what's called an endomembrane system. So in the endomembrane system, it involves our nucleus, the uh, ref ER, the Golgi, and then the cell membrane. Now, what will carry 
the proteins between the, like in this little gap right here, is where we have what's called transport vesicles. So the transport vesicles will carry um, that polypeptide from one organelle to the next. So if we look at the system, uh, the endomembrane system and how it works, we're going to start here with the nucleus. So in the nucleus, we have our DNA is transcribed into RNA. And then it's modified in eukaryotes. We go through RNA processing where the introns are spliced out, 5' prime cap, poly A tail. And then that um, mRNA is going to leave through a nuclear pore and travel to the, to the ribosomes on the rough ER. Now, this is where the ribosomes will read that mRNA in groups of three called codons, and it will transcribe the messenger RNA and build a polypeptide here in yellow. That polypeptide will travel through the Golgi where um, basically you're going to have something very similar to exocytosis, but not really being sent out of the cell. But part of the cell membrane will like, or the uh, rough ER's membrane will bud off around, like imagine you're blowing a bubble. If you blow a bubble, how the bubble like breaks free from the wand. Now imagine that polypeptide inside of the bubble. And then the bubble is going to carry that polypeptide over. So it's going to carry, this is a transport vesicle, carries it to the Golgi. And if you can imagine two like bubbles, like fusing. So imagine inside this bubble, I have my polypeptide. And then here's like the Golgi. So when this vesicle carries it, because they're both made of a lipid bilayer, they like fuse together. And now that um, polypeptide can be within the Golgi. And they get packaged, modified, sorted, um, fixed up a bit. And then another transport vesicle will send this to the um, cell membrane where it'll fuse by exocytosis and leave the cell. Now, sometimes, though, those proteins will um, be part of your cell membrane. So they could end up as like a protein receptor or a um, like a ion channel or uh, like a glucose transporter, et cetera. So um, they may stay within the membrane or they'll be sent out of the cell. Ooh, I kind of feel like, well, okay. So the mitochondria is a, like referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. But really what that means is the mitochondria is a beautiful organelle that is responsible for taking our macromolecules and through aerobic respiration, producing ATP from them. Now, in another video, we'll talk more about the evolution of mitochondria and chloroplasts, but basically they evolved from prokaryotes in a process called, or endosymbiosis. And so that'll be a later uh, video though. Um, oh, my favorite organelle is the lysosome. And in the lys or what the lysosome does is it is responsible for um, breaking down like either damaged organelles or um, organ like little tiny microscopic organisms brought into the cell. Basically, they are responsible for digestion. So the lysosome inside, like inside the lysosome, it's pH is five. It's slightly acidic inside of there. Uh, and that is to create an environment that those enzymes, the hydrolytic enzymes inside, work best at. So if any of those enzymes leak out of the lysosome, they don't hydrolyze nearby organelles. So the lysosome has an acidic pH, um, and it basically removes debris, breaks down macromolecules, digests. So here you can see um, the lysosome is this organelle. If you have a damaged organelle, it or like a food vacuole or something, it can actually like will fuse with um, that uh, vesicle and then hydrolyze and break down whatever's inside. And then we have our chloroplast. And our chloroplast is like the mitochondria. They both have two membranes, their own plasmids, um, their own ribosomes. And the chloroplast is responsible for building life from air and water and so uh, requires light and from the sun or an indoor lamp or something and basically will convert carbon dioxide and water into our um, organic molecules 
and there's a whole nother unit on the chloroplast and photosynthesis. Then we have our vacuole, that's going to be our storage um, within our cells to store waste or excess water. They're pretty um, important when it comes to plants. All right, good job.